Uh, no, no, sir. Everyone is here. And I think our ISA coordinator will be joining us soon. Can, uh, can we start or wait for her? Uh, we can start, sir. Okay. Should we start, sir? Uh, could you please give me the permission to record? Uh, actually, sir, I have already made one co-host and there is no third option. I can share this video through YouTube to it later. You can download. Okay, sir. Thank you. Sir. So can we start now? Yeah, I can start, madam. Okay. So respected principal, sir, all the in-charge teachers of this uh, program, a very good evening to one and all first. So it's a presentation session from our students and your students. So I welcome each and everyone present here and let's not uh, keep the event much waiting. So let's start with the presentations. Mm, I would like to invite Parmeshwari to carry forward. Good morning, everybody present here. Today, we the Greenfinger School at Luz will perform on the topic and for the glory of indigenous games. British Council IDS project, the Green Finger School, Atlus, Solapur, Maharashtra, India, welcomes you for collaboration and interaction in the unfold the glory of indigenous games in collaboration with Asphodel Public School. What are indigenous games? Indigenous games are recreational activities that originated from a particular cultural group, community, or people. These games are different from your mainstream sports, which are regulated by international federations and have fixed rules. These sports include soccer, rugby, cricket, and the Olympics. They have no codified rules, but have different systems in different parts of the world. The topics we will cover, India, Kancha, Nepal, Bakchal, Australia, Kai, New Zealand, Poirakau, South Africa, Diketo. Now I call upon Ms. Mansi Andare to speak about her country. Good evening, everyone present over here. Good evening, everyone present over here. I'm Ms. Mansi on this collaboration. Like to represent an indigenous game which is played in India. It is Kancha. It is a game which is mainly played in rural areas. It is an ancient game which is played today also in many villages. It is played by marble. So now I am going to speak on various things like history, rules, equipment, etc. So first let's start with how to play the game. Draw a circle in a dirt or use a chalk to draw a circle on a pavement. Spread most of your marbles out within the circle. Distribute the remaining marbles one to each player. It helps if these marbles are different colors from the marbles on the ground. Each player gets a turn to shoot their marble into the circle. Many marbles they knock out of the circle go to the shooter. Shooting technique. Bend your index finger or middle finger backward slightly. Place the marble on a finger tree and release the finger which will shoot the marble forward. Play rotate from shooter to shooter until all marbles are climbed. So now let's go into the history of this game. Kancha is also known as Goti. It's an Indian traditional game, which is played mostly by the kids, but still are cherished by the people of other ages, since it reminds them of their childhood. This is absolute fun has to play. As we can notice that modern generation is engaged in playing indoor games or engaged on cellular phones or the computers. This game is still series has an outdoor game, once famous gully sports culture was favorite of many young boys in the town and villages near them. So now let's see the rules and equipment. So rules. Rule number one. If a player knocks the player, then the shooter wins. All the players marble. They have won so far and that player is out of the game now. Rule number two. You can choose to play where the shooter marble is removed from the circle at the end of each turn. Now the equipment which are needed. Marbles, at least three. Means every person must have at least three marbles to play. Example, if you are nine people playing, then you will need 
at least 27 marble thank you now i would hand over good morning everyone sir good evening sir and everyone here myself sugar sandeep pandey and i am going to be representing country of sri lanka how to players form a circle the ball is thrown into the air each player passes it to another by striking the ball upwards with the palm of the hand the ball is usually passed around the circle players at least one point eight meters up but the game can be played by hitting to any player in the circle or the diagonal next to the next to the player facing the in this game from the third state island a number of players uh, players stood in a circle and sang the five red ball song as they hit a hit a ball up in the air with the palms of their hands the game was played in the three four leaf red two top five which is quite slight when that five red also used the same to all three to the top now let's see the equipment and this groups Winner team contest. The game is won by the group that is able to keep the ball going the best and does not allow it to hit the ground. If the ball is the if the ball hits the ground while attempting to achieve for the designated target score, continue the score. If you see a tennis ball, small tennis ball, a kitta or a small golf ball, group of four to eight players, a designated indoor or outdoor team area suitable for that. Now I would like to hand over my mic to Vidish. Good evening, everyone. Present over here. I am Ritesh V. I am presenting the game the Poi Rakau, originated from New Zealand. Now let's see how to play this game. One person in the middle of the group passes out the circle. If the person, the person is known as Putahi, passes with the right hand, then the catcher must catch with the left hand and pass it to the next person on the left that passes back to the middle. Other actions can be added. Such as leg lifts or head tilts, and the catcher must copy the noises and can also be added jumping actions or clapping before the catch. Next, let's let's go to the deep history of this game. Traditionally, poi rakau was a training game for the warriors. One person stood in the middle, known as putahi, surrounded by the thrower, known as takunga, standing in a circle. The rakau was made of from the metal. And sharpened means the wood means the stick which was used for playing was sharpened at the end. They were thrown to the person in the putahi. On catching the rakau, the warrior threw it at the person in the middle who did not have a stick, who then had to catch and throw on it. Now let's see the rules and equipments of this game. These rules are very easy and it is also enjoyable to play this game. The rules first: rakau placed standing on the ground. Players, the players leave their rakau and move quickly to the left or the right, trying to catch the rakau before it touches the ground. Means all the players leave their rakau and try to catch the rakau of the other player which is side of them. Next, second rule: a player can be eliminated if they did not catch the next rakau or make a bad pass, where the other player has no chance of getting the rakau before it hits the ground. Means. the player who does not catch the rakau of the another person can be eliminated and the if any player makes a bad move he can also be eliminated then the equipments needed for this game are you can use broomsticks hockey sticks or the meter rulers to play this game i hope you have learned this game now i hand over the mic to my friend ranveer good evening everyone present over here myself ranveer presenting the game dicato this dicato game is the indigenous game of south africa Now I will tell you how to play this game. You throw the bigger stone up and move all ten stones out of the circle and catch the bigger stone with the same hand just before it touches the ground. You throw the goal up again and move exactly nine stones back into the circle, leaving one stone outside and catch the goal just before it touches the ground. That's the first thing. You repeat the procedure, moving nine stones out and eight stones in. Eight stones out and seven stones in, while throwing up the goal and catching it until no stone is left in the circle. Let's know the history about this game. The attackers score when they have moved the ball down the entire length of sport reflects the society in which it is found. Home science, maths, history, literature, technology, health, law, business, all topics stand. This material was not stable in neutral or alkaline solutions. 
A short lifespan might also indicate health problems that were once prevalent in your family. In this study, we discovered a novel class of inhabitants using a 3D paramacophore guided diet. Good evening, one and all present here. I, Ms. Parmeshwari Sahani, will represent the game Bakchil from Nepal in the topic Unfold the Glory of Indigenous Game. Nepal Bakchil, the goat side. The object of the, of the goat is to corner all the tigers on the board. First, you have to place the goats on the board individually at the beginning. Second, you can move the goat only after you have placed all the goats on the board. Third, the goats can only move along the lines of the board and must be placed in the intersections. Fourth, you can only make the same move back and forth three times in a row. Fifth, a goat cannot be captured if there is no empty intersection for the tiger to jump. Now the tiger's side. The objective of the tiger is to swallow a given number of goats. First, all the goats are present on the board right from the beginning. Second, you can move only one tiger with each turn. Third, the tiger can move along the lines of the board to the next intersection. Fourth, you can only make the same move back and forth three times in a row. Fifth, tiger cannot leap over two or more goats connected on a line. Now let's go deep into the history and of the game. Bakchil is thought to have been discovered by Himalayan herders. The game mimics their work life. Shepherds spend many hours playing Bakchil on a grid scrapped into the dirt, using larger stones to represent Bak and smaller pebbles as Bakri. In Nepal, Bakchil is played much the same way it has been for centuries. School children scribble a board on paper during breaks or refined sc grid scratched into the dirt. The shepherds used to play this game as an enjoyment and to showcase their work to others through a game. Carrying this tradition on the people of Nepal have also started to play the game. From a child to grandparents, from girls to boys, everybody can play this game. Let's go and learn about the equipments and information about the game. Equipments. An alcohol board, four black counters representing the tigers and 20 white counters representing the goats. Information. Bakchur is a traditional abstract game that is popular in Nepal. The game roughly translates to moving tiger. The game is thought to be similar to checkers. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Now I would like to share our experience and give vote of thanks. We had a very happy and enjoying experience in our journey till now. We would like to thank all our teachers for supporting us still here. I would like to thank all the students for showing such an active participation. And the last but not the least, our guests for joining us and being patient listeners and spending your time for us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sir, I think we will hand over to Vinayak, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah, one minute, I'll make you host. Hello. Hi. Namaste and good afternoon, sir. Namaste, namaste, ma'am. You are back. Yeah. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, How are you all? 
Fine, everyone fine here? Mm -hmm. uh, just now our IC coordinator has arrived and I must say that she missed a great thing just now because the students of Greenfinger schools are really much appreciable. The works were so good. And now I think it's our turn to present. So our students are already ready. Uh, let me give the turn to Ayushri Sahi. Are you ready, Ayushri? You can share your screen. Yes, sir. Okay, you may start. May I start? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Your screen is visible. You can start, I think. Sir, sir, one second. I'll share it again. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. It's me, Ashti Sahi from Esperal Public School from Kathmandu, Nepal. Today, I'm here to tell about our traditional game of Nepal, Bakchal. So let us know about history. So Bakchal was originated in Nepal by Nevari people, and it is also known as Dhukasa in Nevari word. And it is played mostly in boards, floors, and stone and rocks. So nowadays we can play this game on our mobile laptop in our devices. The rules and regulation of Bakchal. Rules of Tiger. Tiger can move to an adjacent free position along the lines. Can, tiger can capture goats during any move if one space after the goat is empty. If goats are killed, you are the winner. Rules for goat. Cannot cannot move until all goats are positioned in the board one by one. Cannot, goat cannot jump over tigers or other goats. If you jump in tigers, you may lost. You must leave the board after being captured by the tiger. If all four tigers are trapped, you are the winner. So this is the picture. So this is the board of Bakhtal. We, we, we can play here. So here is the picture of, here are some pictures. So in primitive ways, people used to play like this. They are playing on floor. So if, thank you so much. If you know, if you want to know about more, you may text me or you may watch this link. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Ayushree. Now, uh, Josna, you may take your turn. Or is my screen visible? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. You are visible. Carry on. A very warm welcome to my teachers, friends, and everyone who are gathered here today. I'm Josna Adhikari of Grade 7 from Aspural Public School, Kathmandu, Nepal. And I hope that we all learn something new from this presentation. Now let's start. First of all, I would like to give a little bit introduction about Chungi. Chungi is a traditional game of Nepal. Chungi is a ball made out of rubber bands. Now moving on to its history. The origins of Chungi are not known yet, and it also does not have a definite history. It is mostly played by the children of Nepal and Northeastern India. In ancient times, it was made out of feathers. It can be played by 
minimum one player. It can also be played in groups. As we can see, see here is a picture of Tungi and here are some children playing Tungi. Now let's move on to the rules and regulations. Tungi is played differently in different places. So the rules vary from one place to another. Some of the rules are whoever bounces Tungi for the first time wins and the next rule is Tungi is not allowed to touch any other body parts except the legs. And Thank you everybody for giving me your valuable time. So now I would like to end my presentation. Hope you had a good day. Thank you. Thank you, Josna. Now Raj, you may take your turn. Namaste and good evening to everyone. My name is Das Karmatare and I am from Ashford Public School. As we all know, we are here for ISA project between Nepal and India. Today I would like to tell you all about Kansa game, which was origin originated in India, which we all call the Gusta game in Nepal. Introduction. Kansa game or marble has long hair a firm place in the heart of it, both in India and Nepal. It is played between two or more players. Players try to score points by shooting at the opponent's marble. All you need is a shallow hole in the ground and set of equal size marble, and you are ready to go. Details about the game. Basically, it's a game where the players try to score points by hitting at the opponent's marble. To play these castle games, you need to draw a circle and dig a hole. One player shoots at the marbles of the opponent to knock them out. Gutsa can be played with different rules, but general rules are quite really simple. A circle is drawn on the ground and few marbles are placed inside the circle by a player in a way that it makes it for the opponent to strike those marbles. Along with circle, a swallow hole is dig up in the ground outside of the circle. One player tries to shoot the player's marbles and knock them outside the circle with a shooter marble, a marble used by a player to strike other marbles. The player with a shooter marble then aims it into the hole after shooting at the opponent's marble. If the player succeeds in doing so, he can claim the marble which he knocked out of the circle. If he opts on to play without digging up holes, the rules will become much simpler. Players try to shoot at the marble from a certain distance and try knocking them outside. The player who does not so can claim the marble, player takes Players take a turn doing it. So, as we all can see, here are the rules which made this a little simpler. In this game, there are too many people that can play. Thank you, everyone, for listening to the end. Thank you. Thank you, Raj. Now, Asishma, are you ready? Yes, sir. Let me share your screen.
Namaste everyone, it's me Asis Maran from Esperil Public School. Today I'm going to say you about Poi Rakhi, which is the game of New Zealand. So let's start. It has also its own history and its history. Let's see its history. History, it was started in New Zealand. Uh, it was played among warriors, the warriors of their New Zealand. And let's move to how to play it. Um, we should have, we should move right when the Puthahi says, Puthahi means the middle person of the V, V means circle. Puthahi says, Mutau and left is Mavi. We should have to listen, we should, have, we should listen the Puthahi and drawn left or right. Let's know its rules too. Rules. Players should, should catch the stick before it touches the ground. Players should move to the left side when the Puthahi says Mavi. And here are it is a picture of Poi Rakau game, Rakau game, which have people, uh, which is people um, playing here. You may see here, here are four people and they are standing with this stick and the Puthahi. Um, they will listen to Puthai and according to the Puthais, they will play. As well as thank you all and have a good day. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Asishma. Amun, sir, uh, we have completed from our side. Excellent, sir. Thanks, sir. Really, your student presented excellently, sir. Four games, first, Bakchel that your Nepal's traditional game, after that Chungi, then our Indian traditional game, Pancha, and after that, at New Zealand's Poirakao. Congratulations all the hospital students. Very nicely you presented. Very nice, excellent. Thank you so much, sir. It Thank means you, sir. a lot. Thank you so much, sir. Okay. Done well, students of the hospital public school. I congratulate Joshna, Ayushri, Raj, and Ashishma for their presentation. It was really well. Uh, I think the presentation part is over. I have some questions which uh, I may uh, post to both the schools. That right? even Biva Madam also may have questions. Yeah. Of course, it is a question answer session. But yes, uh, the first one to get the doubt is me that. How many of you get time to play all these games or you are interested in cricket? Maybe, maybe in India, we are interested more in cricket, not in all these. Do you play this uh, game? Uh, Ashishma? Hello, Ashishma. Ashishma. Raj, do you play this game anytime? Bakshal game? Yes, sir. Do you play this game, Bakshal? Yes, sir. Okay, with your friends. Okay. Any of these Green Finger students uh, played this uh, marble game recently? Hands up. Who played marble game recently? Okay, there are a few hands coming up. Good, good. Yeah. Nice. Madam, any question you can ask to the students or students can mutually ask the questions? Okay, uh, Parmeshwari. Yes, sir. Can you answer this question? Why should we play all these uh, traditional games? Uh, these traditional games are for our own good because these games were made by our ancestors and they represent many lives. Uh, as I said in my game, Bakchil, that this game was played by shepherds to introduce their work life. As they wanted to, uh, as they were shepherds, their livelihood worked on sheep, rearing, their rearing and domesticating animals. So they demonstrated the, uh, their life by this bakchil game by showing their struggles with the tigers. So I think that we should play these traditional games with our friends for happiness as well as uh, for knowing our ancestors more. Okay, very good. Uh... Can uh, Ashishma tell me uh, that? Uh... Uh, how can we document these games into one book? Because we don't have any book mentioning the rules and regulations. What to do for that? How can we bring all these games 
of of nepal or india into together one uh, which rules and regulations be known to everybody how what can we do sir mm, one sentence yeah. you can say repeat the question how see for the rules of the these games uh, in india or nepal or uh, australia these are not available in one single book so what students can do for that to make uh, it all available to next generation so thank you for the question uh, we uh, all students of our nepal india or our countries uh, students may have um, help uh, they should have to be friends uh, and they should have to uh, work hard to do that we should have uh, they can uh, write uh, in a paper and print it it and they can make a book and they can uh, they can uh, give to others to share it uh, they should have to um, do hard work for that thank you sir okay that's a very good idea we can codify all these and then make a book and preserve for the future or nowadays you can make it available in the form of wikipedias youtube videos etc so it can be uh, reaching to the people it is very nice idea uh, some of our students have prepared some rules and regulations of uh, these games rules book they have prepared uh, they will also of course they will publish through that a wordpress or uh, youtube uh, channel they will uh, publish it anyone from audience have a question i have a question i don't i forgot the game name but what is mavi m a v i ping poi rakao i think uh, who presented i think ashishma presented that right uh, yes sir uh, mavi means that the uh, uh, pathai i need i think uh, you know pathai means the me middle portion of the circle and the mavi is uh, left because uh, when the pathai says uh, mavi we should have to uh, turn uh, left and when they said um, tha, uh, pathai, um, when they said that uh, mavi we should have to around uh, the circle by left okay we can also get this uh, youtube video so poi raku rakhau game you can also uh, browse in the internet uh, from before you leave your table browse it clear your doubts okay yeah yes sir yes sir yeah. sir anything more in the agenda i'm also vinayak sir okay sir i think it's okay uh, it's completed sir okay uh, then i can uh, post presentation activities also please inform the student there should be a feedback on uh, this session exchange it from both the students through mail through the in charge teachers uh, amol sir proceed to the next yes okay so today very nice interaction between the green fingers hello uh, i hope i am audible yes, to everyone yes sir. sir there was a break in between you can continue now okay zoom is troubling us today maybe saturday that is why uh, saturday afternoon zoom is also uh, very much annoyed want to take rest no. once again thank you very much diva ma'am vinayak sir all his colleagues teachers and the charming students of aspadal public school thank you very much for your support for your nice presentation and nice interaction with us after that i will very much thankful to give such a opportunity 
to interact with the international level to so also of inspiration mr joel sir our principal the green finger school akluj after that i am very thankful to our ids coordinator hasnil ma'am to she took uh, always practice and making perfect for our students and us after that i am very thankful to my colleagues mr umesh sir and mr Mr. Uh, excuse me, I'm back again. Some network issues are seriously troubling us today here. Uh, okay. Anyway, we are not pro uh, prolonging this. Uh, thank you, everyone. I think the vote of thanks ended abruptly in between. But um, uh, on behalf of the Greenfinger School uh, and also the Asphodel Public School and behalf of the ISA coordinators, uh, the principals. Uh, we thank everyone from the both the sides. Thank you for your cooperation and bye-bye till we meet next time. Uh, bye for now. Sir, our ma'am wants to say something. Yeah, sure. Okay. Namaste and good afternoon, sir. And good afternoon, everyone. And we also would like to appreciate you uh, in behalf of Aspodil Public School. Uh, sir, thank you so much for giving us such a nice opportunity. And uh, it was, I think it will become <laughs> fruitful for, uh, for both sides. And uh, uh, I just would like to say thank you so much for all the um, teachers, princip principals are ISC coordinator and all the teacher team and student team who has shown their uh, excellent performance during this period thank you thank you so much hope to see you in future again and uh, hope to do collaboration work in the future thank you thank you so much okay thank you and say bye bye each other unmute and say bye 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 everyone bye bye sir bye 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 bye, bye, -bye. bye, -bye. have a nice day Bye, 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 boys. <laughs>